Wow, that's interesting. The CIA stopped the FBI from investigating the 9-11 hijackers and their network? Weird! Let's mold in the Central Committee. Let's cringe in the Central Committee. Let's get into these, uh, the 9-11 stuff, because, oof, the FBI just released a report late last night on 9-11, and you won't believe what it says. Exactly what I've been saying for a very long time. The FBI has released a long secret document from its investigation into possible connections between the 9-11 hijackers and the government of Saudi Arabia. It comes as the nation marked the 20th anniversary okay, of Ground thanks, Zero buddy. here in New York at the Pentagon just outside Washington at the Flight 93 National Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and at countless events across the country and beyond. ABC's Trevor Alt on what that FBI document revealed. Tonight, as countless American families remember their loved ones lost in the September right, thanks, 11th attacks, President October. Biden honoring their request thanks. to declassify and disclose new documents. While heavily redacted, they reveal details of the investigation into Saudi nationals in the U.S. who helped some of the 9-11 hijackers, though they make no conclusion as to whether Saudi Arabia's government was involved. These 16 pages are the first to be released since the president announced last week he'd begin doing so. Hundreds of affected families and survivors had told Biden if he didn't start that process, he wouldn't be welcome at Saturday's memorial. These memorials are really important but they're also incredibly difficult for the people who are affected by it. This weekend, America renewing its resolve to never forget the sacrifices and heroism that day 20 years ago, nor the thousands of lives lost. My memory goes back to that terrible day, but it was also a time when many people acted above and beyond the ordinary. Across the country, symbolic tributes to those brave actions. Firefighters climbing 110 floors on these Kansas City steps, this staircase in Orlando, in this gym in New Jersey. The cadets who are taking the field with three first responders. At oh, West Point, America. every Army football player taking the field with an American flag. And notably, former President Bush praising the American spirit, but invoking the ongoing threat of terrorism, both foreign and domestic. There is little cultural overlap between violent extremists abroad and violent extremists at home. They are children of the same foul spirit. And it is our continuing oh, duty to confront thanks, them. And that I'll was the prevailing hope of so many who'd been profoundly impacted by these attacks. And while we should Ryan, never on? move on, we can move forward as one nation. When we say never forget that it's not just a word or a catchy phrase. Hey, okay, chat, listen to me. Unless Saudi Arabia is held responsible because they did it, then we forgot. They fucking did it. We have never, I mean, the idea that, oh, look at all these Saudi nationals helping the hijackers, but we draw no conclusion from that. People want to talk about Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, Syria, everyone but who actually did 9-11, which was the Saudi Arabian government. That it's that we never forget the American unity that we felt after those days. That's what mattered. Never forget a pledge we have made good on. Trevor joins us now live from Lower Manhattan. What? Trevor, the lawyer for the family suing is out with a statement tonight. Tell us about that message. Well, Lindsay, they thank the president and the lawyer claims that these documents show how Saudi Arabia supported Al Qaeda in the U.S. Now, Saudi Arabia has long denied any involvement in these attacks, and they say they welcome this declassification. And we are expecting many more documents over the next six months. Lindsay, well, Trevor, thanks so Saudi much. Saudi Arabia says they didn't do it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out. What did the Saudis have to gain from um, the plane fucking us? So what's happened in Saudi Arabia is in order to keep their oil flowing to the West, the United States of America supported the House of Saud having an absolute despotism over the people of Saudi Arabia. Now, the people of Saudi Arabia got wealthy from their oil, um, and it became apparent to them that, hey, we don't have any say in our own government. And so in order to stop 
a desire for a democratic government rising up in Saudi Arabia, the House of Saud determined that they were going to support extreme far-right fundamentalists called Wahhabi, Wahhabis. And they were going to fund these extreme far-right uh, uh, strain of Islam. And so these Wahhabi uh, clerics believe that no infidels should dirty the sovereignty of the Saudi kingdom. And so when American troops went to Saudi Arabia uh, uh, to deter um, Saddam Hussein from invading during the first Gulf War and then left military forces behind, these far-right Wahhabis believed that, it, uh, you know, American and Western values were being imposed and invading their territory. And so the Saudi government has different elements, right? It's not a coherent whole. And the strains of the Saudi government that support this Wahhabi uh, Islam, this far-right version of Islam, uh, supported uh, efforts to humiliate and attack the United States so that it would leave Saudi Arabia. Just so you know, the United States has since left Saudi Arabia. Just, just in case you're wondering, we have in fact closed our bases in Saudi Arabia. We no longer are in Saudi Arabia. For the most part, um, Al-Qaeda was largely successful in their goals. Uh, Mike, if I recall correctly, nine of the five hijackers, it was 15 of the 19. 15 of the 19 were from Saudi Arabia. Oh yeah, and when uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabia was recently criticized by Canada for human rights violations, they made this post. As the Arabic saying goes, he who interferes with what doesn't concern him finds what doesn't please him. Sticking one's nose where it doesn't belong. And they so show a Canadian airliner flying toward Toronto's CN Tower. This is after... Canada recently criticized Saudi human rights violations. A group at Saudi Arabia apologized and deleted a Twitter post showing an image of an Air Canada passenger plane veering toward Toronto's tallest skyscraper with a warning against meddling and others' affairs. Some on social media noted the image was reminiscent of scenes during the September 11, 2001 attacks in the United States when nearly 3,000 people were killed by 19 hijackers, 15 of whom were Saudi nationals who flew airliners into the World Trade Center, Twin Towers, and the Pentagon. Infographic KSA, described on its website as a volunteer group of Saudi youth interested in technology, published the image of the airliner with the warning, he who interferes with what doesn't concern him finds what doesn't please him. Infographic also accused Canada of sticking one's nose where it doesn't belong. The post came amid an emerging rift after Canada condemned the imprisonment of several human rights activists, including Samir Badwadi. She is the sister of Raf. Badwadi, a prominent human rights campaigner who was sentenced 10 years in prison in 2014 on charges of insulting Islam. His wife and children are naturalized Canadian citizens. After Ottawa's criticism, Saudi Arabia also froze. She traded investment with Canada worth billions of dollars and ordered 15,000 Saudi students not to attend Canadian universities. Yeah, that's our ally, by the way. Good, good job, America. You know, thank God we're so close with the worst country in the world. Saudi Arabia is probably the biggest threat, um, foreign threat to the United States and to the Western world. Big true, a lot of people will uh, be triggered over this fact, but it's okay. I thought we were the worst. I mean, we're the worst, but if you're talking about like the Western world, the biggest threat is Saudi Arabia. I honestly can't wait for when we switch over to renewables and Saudi Arabia crumbles because they don't have any other economy other than oil. I mean, they have so much wealth that they got from selling the oil. And like, listen, Saudi Arabia is in a desert. That's a great place to build renewable capability. <laughs> right, so anyway, okay, what else happened? So we have that secret do document. Long secret FBI report reveals new connections between 9-11 hijackers and Saudi religious officials in the U.S. Hey, Saudi religious officials. See what I said about Wahhabi uh, Islam? Lawyers for the families of the 9-11 victims who are suing the Saudi kingdom in federal court said the document proved provided important support to their theory that a handful of Saudis connected to their government worked in concert to assist the first two Al-Qaeda hijackers sent to the United States in January 2000. 
The FBI agents working this case detailed a Saudi government support network that was working in 99, 2000, 2001 to provide the hijackers with everything they needed to mount the attacks. Apartments, money, English lessons, and flight school. The 2016 report shows the FBI agents found evidence that sev several Saudi religious officials working in the United States had connections not only to the people who assisted the hijackers, but to other Qaeda op operatives and suspected extremists. There were many Saudis in the country who had diplomatic credentials, but were mainly involved in religious activity. Although the FBI stopped investigating the case, official says, it kept the Encore file nominally... Hey, why did they stop investigating the actual cause of 9-11, I wonder? Mike, you have to see this funny video photo of, of Biden with Trump. Okay, hold on. We're, we're doing a thing. We're ranting about a thing. Relatives of the victims say the U.S. government has maintained a shield of secrecy to protect the Saudi kingdom from embarrassing revelations. There's no reason this should be brought to light, said Christopher Gancy, a battalion chief in the New York Fire Department whose father, Peter, was the highest ranking fire official to die in the attacks. The American people deserve to know this information. The ground troops, the FBI agents on the street have been chomping at the bit to have this come out. It's been so frustrating for them and for us. Hmm. Among the pieces of new evidence cited in the 2016 report are the telephone records showing that a Saudi graduate student who helped the first two hijackers to settle in San Diego was in contact with a Saudi religious official stationed in the United States who in turn had connection to other Qaeda operatives and later became a target of a new investigation. The Saudi student, Omir Adboyumi, was a middle-aged man who rarely attended classes and was being paid surreptitiously by the Saudi Defense Ministry. Well, that's weird. Where he had previously worked. Starting in 1998, the FBI investigated him for suspected extremist activity, but that inquiry was inconclusive. An FBI official who was a case agent for the Bureau's initial investigation of the attacks, Jacqueline McGuire, testified to the bipartisan 9-11 Commission of 2004 that by all indications, Bayomi's first meeting with the hijackers was a random encounter. But the Encore team came to believe that Bayomi not only gave extensive help to two Qaeda operatives, Nasrif al-Hazimi and Khalid al-Mindahar, but later lied about his dealings with them and others. Although Mindahar and Azemi were seasoned al-Qaeda operatives, they spoke virtually no English, could not read street signs, and were unable to navigate around the United States without considerable help, people who knew them told investigators. The Encore team believed that a support network of Saudi officials and other extremists in Southern California mobilized before their arrival in Los Angeles on January 15, 2000. Bayumi went directly from a meeting at the Saudi consulate in Los Angeles to a nearby cafe, where he waited for Hazumi and Mindahar, approached them when they arrived, and then spent half an hour speaking with them. Another witness, who appears to be a former Yemeni student in Los Angeles, told the FBI that a friend of his was tasked with helping the hijackers by a Saudi imam assigned to the Saudi consulate, Fahad al Tumurari. The FBI report quotes the witness as saying his friend, an, a, a Trayan worshiper at Thumieri's mosque named Muhammad Yohar, was instructed to take the two hijackers to the cafe where they met Bayomi. Mm. <laughs> FBI officials previously described Bayomi as having been in close telephone contact with Thumieri, the Saudi imam and consular official in Los Angeles. The detainee's older brother, Aisa, was killed by Saudi forces during the 2004 kidnapping of an American worker in Saudi Arabia, Paul Johnson, who was beheaded by his captors. According to the report, Thumieri also had telephone contacts with some alleged Muslim extremists in Los Angeles who were suspected of helping Ahmed Roussam, an Algerian who was captured by U.S. border agents as he tried to cross from Canada on his way to bomb Los Angeles International Airport in late 1999. It's not clear if the FBI determined the extent of those su suspected connections. He was deported to Saudi Arabia when he tried to return to Los Angeles in 2003. Uh-huh. Investigators for the 9-11 Commission concluded he was not a credible witness. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sudieri, the son of a prominent Saudi family, traveled extensively to the United States as a Muslim missionary for the Saudi Ministry of Islamic Affairs. 
During this period, the Encore Report states that he spent four months as the roommate of Zahid Cahil, a Palestinian American extremist who was living in Missouri. The FBI investigated Khalil for terrorism-related activities, including the procurement of a satellite phone for bin Laden. Cahil has since died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, baby. Are you ready, chat? This is what I wanted to show you. Are you ready, chat? In contrast to other leads developed by the Encore team, FBI leaders took the matter seriously. They authorized an operation to put the two Saudis under full-time surveillance after they landed in the United States, former officials have told ProPublica. But the episode ended when CIA officers in Riyadh, the Saudi capital, objected strongly to the FBI plan. For reasons that remain unclear, the two Saudis canceled the visit at the last minute. Former investigators felt they lost an important opportunity to learn more about the suspected role of Saudi officials in support of the network of September 11 hijackers. The new information about Sudieri raises even more question about why U.S. authorities were not able to pursue the lead more aggressively in 2010. Huh. Wow, that's interesting. The CIA stopped the FBI from investigating the 9-11 hijackers and their network? Weird! I just wanted to show you that, chat. Saudi Arabia did 9-11. We should sell them billions of dollars worth of weapons. Abolish the CIA. Legitimately abolish the CIA. Abolish the CIA. And put every single person that's involved in uh, covert operations in prison for the rest of their lives. 